is the most important thing to think about in CHOP? I think that's a question we have to keep asking ourselves every single day as the markets continue to convincingly, at least for now, be in a distribution CHOP. Now, yesterday I talked about the different levels of support that could be where we bounce from. So today, let's talk about resistance, but not just resistance from the perspective of, say, the top of the range, but where there's often resistance uh, in the middle of the range. We have a point of control here and where there's often resistance by way of understanding where the ETFs are. So we'll do a deep dive on the S&P. Now, when we think about the S&P, if we really want to take it to a, another level, a deeper level, understanding what's inside the S&P, we start off with the XLK. Tech, XLK is the number one weighted sector within the S&P, which actually lands us squarely at the doorstep of Apple and Microsoft. All right. Now, XLK, I can't say is, is really uh, very strong. It's not in a downtrend, but it has bounced off a Darvis level, the same levels that I talked about for the NASDAQ and so forth. Check out yesterday's free video for that explainer. Uh, the other heavily weighted sector is the financials. Now, financials didn't continue higher through the resistance. You can see here, we didn't keep moving higher or even close above these Darvis resistance levels, but we did poke up to a new high and, and that alone is worth mentioning, that alone is worth noting. So we wanna see a close above that level, a close at that high. But nonetheless, this is a market that from a relative outperformance standpoint might be uh, the best look within the S&P. Uh, probably the worst look of the three heavily weighted sectors is healthcare. Uh, is there a sell the rip corner of the market in the S&P, because it's not the S&P itself, whether that's ES you trade or whether that's SPY or even calls on SPY or puts on SPY, right? The options. Uh, the corner of the S&P to short, again, not the broader average, is the sector, healthcare, XLV. And this is where when we get into CHOP, this is the difference between a stock picker or sector pickers market and in the context of an uptrend, sort of thinking most broadly. In an uptrend, I don't really want to be an individual stock picker. Sure, there are relative outperformers and we could find them in much the same way. But actually to bet on all the boats, right, to play the tide is often a lot more productive. But as soon as we go into distribution on the broader averages, as we have in the NAS, as we have in the Dow, and we've been this way all year in the Russell, this is where it actually makes sense to really be a stock picker. I mean, I think it's always sort of a picker's market. It may not be a stock picker's market. It's always a relative outperforming picker's market, if you want to think of it that way. But as we go into CHOP, it's going to make so much more sense to think about corners of the market that are still viable and corners of the market that are sellable. You have a situation now, we all do, and it's ter tremendous opportunity, where we can find corners of the market that we're willing to short. XLI, IYZ, um, XLV, and corners of the market that I'm willing to buy. Um, XLF is a, is a great example. So if we have this understanding inside the sector, this is automatically, naturally, and very easily going to feed into the individual stock selection too, while reminding us that, yeah, the broader average is in chop, and until I'm at the bottom of the range or the top of the range, I really don't have a clear edge. So it's those Darvis levels that are going to be such a key part of finding those opportunities. And by the way, if you want to see more about how I use Darvis, how we use the underlying market structure like the JT Multi, check out the webinar replay. You can check it out right now over at simplertrading.com forward slash trend. This was the webinar we had last night. We have a new one coming up. So we always have two webinars before class and the next one will be on the 13th, I believe. So the following Wednesday, I believe. You'll get an email about it. Um, 
And so next Wednesday, we're going to dive into a little bit more about why daily time frames. You know, I think this is a really important topic. A lot of folks think about, uh, you know, intraday, but but why why the daily chart? Why end of day or daily charts, right? What else do we want to think about? Well, how much time, you know, do we need to be able to trade daily time frames? I usually get my daily time frame scans and alerts in in usually less than 60 minutes. So it's about a 60 minute practice. I mean, you need about an hour, right? Uh, because it's it's a lot like just keeping up with the homework, right? We don't wanna have to, you know, do that last minute crunch time type every Sunday type thing. I think it's easier to do a little bit every day and you'll get to the point where you're probably doing your scans across the multi, finding relative outperformers and setting your alerts in those in probably less than 60 minutes. But I would say, you know, leave an hour while you're learning the process and learning what the cues are. But we can do this on a daily, right? We can do this when we're looking at one new candle every day. So what I'm talking about is daily analysis, you know, not only in, in the class, but in the webinar and, and even here in today's video, we're in distribution on the daily. We're looking at, choppy markets on the indices but we have downtrends that are wrap that are valid for sell the rip iyz xlv um, are two examples right xli and then we have markets that are looking stronger like financials these aren't uptrends this is not an uptrend but natural gas is ung or ng futures uh, crude oil is USO or crude oil futures, uh, uranium, right? So we have places where we can find pretty decent strength. I think CCJ as a playoff uranium looks even better. So there's sort of a wide look at where for me, the beginning part of my day is always day trading. The end of my day is a daily time frame and looking for trades that I will take overnight from anywhere from two to three days to two to three weeks. And this is, these are the places that I'm looking to do it. And I'm in a place where in my book of trades, I've got puts now in my book and I've got calls. And I have a feeling some of the puts are, you know, not gonna be a majority of my book, but they're gonna have a whole lot more company. All right, we're gonna see more opportunity there. All right, so with that being said, uh, check out the replay. I look forward to uh, getting your feedback, whatever questions you might have. Feel free to leave them here. Uh, join me in Charts and Coffee if you have any questions. That goes live every morning at 9 a.m. Have a great one. I'll see you in the next update. Hey traders, Raggy from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.